Hi folks, fourth axis CAD, CAM, and machining, showing that workflow of going from a design to toolpaths to posting it out and running it on your machine. We'll cover some of the common mistakes and we're gonna show off some of the new features, including some simultaneous fourth axis code in Fusion 360. And we're gonna do all of this on the new Tormach Micro Arc, which is a fourth axis from Tormach that is easy to load on and off the machine, incredibly fast, and most importantly, has a harmonic drive, which is nearly backlash free. Let's dive in. We downloaded the MicroArc solid model off the Tormach website. However, that model's missing a few features. So if you download the version off the NYC CNC website, we've gone ahead and added the rigid groups and joints that make this fully functional in Fusion. We've got a one and a half inch piece of aluminum modeled up. We're gonna add an inscribed polygon, fancy way of saying a hex pattern. That'll let us show off the positional or three plus one machining. And then we're gonna add a wrapped feature, which we do by creating a sketch, splitting the body, and then offsetting that face. That creates a true wrapped feature where the sidewalls of that part remain normal to our cylinder. This will be a great way of demonstrating true simultaneous fourth axis machining. As we move into the CAM workspace to program the tooling and G-code for this part, we first create a setup. This is the most common place that folks that are new to fourth axis trip up. You have to set your work coordinate system on the center of rotation. If we look at the micro arc unit, it has this chuck that's rotating. Most of us are gonna put this along the X axis of our machine. Ours is actually on the X negative. What that means is it's on the right side pointed away from the positive direction. So the center of our work coordinate system has to be at the center of this chuck, which is the intersection of the z-axis as well as the center of our y-axis. X can be anywhere along your part. So in this case, we're using the end of the part. You could also have it be programmed as the face of your three-jaw chuck or the micro arc also comes with an ER40. So it could be that call face and that could be a work coordinate system that becomes repeatable, meaning you could store it as an offset and not have to reset it. To program our three plus two or our tool orientation, we'll create a 2D contour. We can hold the Alt key to ensure that when we select a line, Fusion 360 isn't going to try to automatically chain or select additional lines. And then we choose the tool orientation option. And here we can pick the face of the hex, which will tell it the Z axis should be normal to or perpendicular to that feature. Your X and Y axis generally don't actually matter here. The only exception would be if you're using a toolpath like Parallel, where the toolpath itself is programmed relative to the axis. It's that simple. We've now programmed this part. We've told the machine or the A axis to rotate over and machine that flat. You could continue doing this for the rest of the five features or right click, add to new pattern, circular pattern, six instances are done. So that was an example of three plus one fourth axis work. It's gonna rotate that A axis, it's gonna stop, then it's going to machine a feature, and then it's going to rotate that A axis again. Fusion 360 also supports simultaneous fourth axis. We're gonna give a simple example here. There are three tool paths that will support what I call the simple simultaneous fourths. 2D adaptive, 2D pocket, and 2D contour. We're gonna use 2D adaptive to rough out this pocket. Check wrap tool path, pick the outside of our part, and then we can go back and choose the pocket selection and we'll choose the floor of this part. I'm gonna add a ramp taper angle of eight degrees. And that creates a slight taper in, which can really help with chip evacuation. We're gonna run this dry for video purposes, but normally I would recommend an MQL or flood style coolant. By default, 2D adaptive will leave some radial and axial stock. That's intentional because adaptives are not finishing strategies. In this example though, we're gonna take the axial stock to leave and set it at zero, which will still leave 10 thousandths of an inch along these walls. I'll use a 2D contour to clean those up. And there's a simple way, cool little trick to program those. Right click, create derived operation, 
2D milling, 2D contour. I'll take off the radial stock to leave. Click OK. It has inherited the features from the adaptive, which is absolutely awesome. I don't have to re-click the contour. I don't have to re-click the wrap toolpath. We're good to go. Let's test our code. Go to Setup, Create NC Program. This is one of the, another new feature in Fusion that's absolutely awesome. This lets us save some of our post-processor settings, which are really important for things like fourth axis work. Our output folder is our R drive. That's because we've mapped our MX controller. So posting to the R drive posts directly to that machine. No more USBs or sneaker net. Absolutely something I recommend doing. We'll pick Tormach from the post. And this is important, rotary table axis. We have to pick, in this case, X reversed because our micro arc is on the right side of our table. If you see some of our older fourth axis videos, we usually had our fourth axis on the left side, so that would have been a traditional X. Click OK. This NC program here, we can rename, saves all those settings. On the operations tab, we can choose which to post. Right click, post. That's going to automatically post with those saved settings to that correct location. We can open up that code and take a quick look at it. If you're new to our channel, we have a video where we show how to install Visual Studio Code, which is this purple colored G code editor that we think is a big improvement to uh, editing and using your G code. But let's take it one step further. We can upload it to a virtual PathPilot simulator. Just go to hub.pathpilot.com. Click Enter PathPilot. That'll launch a full-blown PathPilot simulator. This is really cool. Under File, we'll choose Virtual PathPilot Files. There's our code. Load it. So this can be really helpful if you're programming from home or somebody else is on your Tormach and you want to test this out to confirm that your fourth axis code is going to work. It's also a chance for us to show that you need to enable the fourth axis in PathPilot and you need to be at least on 2.4.3 for the micro arc to work because it's a new product. And we can even get a visual simulation of this, which is absolutely awesome. We've got the MicroArc on the new Saunders subplate for the MicroArc. This includes a reference surface to locate it relative to the fixture plate, so it's a repeatable setup that makes it really easy with one hand to lift this on and off, set it up, and add fourth axis capability when you want it, but then take it off when you go back to a three axis machine. If you need to jog your fourth axis in PathPilot, use the comma and the period on your keyboard. and we'll use our Heimer to find that center of rotation. And I'll do that by cheating. I've got an inch and a half piece of raw material here. I'm gonna find the top of it and tell PathPilot that that's 0.75 inches high, which will put me on center line. Same with Y. If you're going to set your micro arc up using a subplate like this that lets it be repeatable, you can save those offsets either as a custom offset or just write them down, and it will make for an easier way to set this up without necessarily having to use a Heimer to find your Y and Z. Cycle start and we're off. So again, I was really impressed with the speed of it, but it's not actually as relevant to what you really need out of this. And what you need is something that is repeatable and smooth. And that's what I think is interesting about the micro arc. It's a lot smaller than the traditional fourth axis offerings from Tormach, but most of the work that we've done and we've seen others do isn't particularly large. So I don't think that the size profile of the micro arc is going to be a true limitation to it. It also has a through bore, which is great for the folks out there doing gunsmith style work. One of the most common questions that we get is Fusion 360's ability to handle simultaneous fourth axis. Fusion simultaneous fourth axis in the adaptive clearing and 2D contour is limited to cylindrical objects that it can actually unwrap and then rewrap the toolpath. So it can't do an oval or something that's not truly cylindrical. However, there are two new toolpaths already out, although one's in beta, and there's more coming. Let's give you a sneak peek at those. If you saw the video we did machining Tom Lipton's toothpick, that's using the rotary toolpath. Rotary is under multi-axis. If you don't see it, go to your name, preferences, preview, 
and you'll have to scroll down and enable the rotary strategy and enable extensions to get access to it. This allows fourth axis code for non-cylindrical objects. Super easy to program. It's still in beta. There's a couple of quirks around the retract and clearance planes. Hop over to the toothpick video to see that in more detail. It's exciting because this is one of the first tool paths that's coming out of Dell Cam. Autodesk purchased Dell Cam a few years back. Incredibly powerful cam software. It used to be made under brand names like Feature Mill, Part Maker, Power Mill, and they're porting those tool paths into Fusion, and there's more coming. The other fourth axis simultaneous tool path that's pretty exciting is actually Flow. We've got a part modeled up here, and this is a spline. And a spline would be a great example of a feature that wrapped toolpath would not be able to handle. However, flow will work for this. And to do it, we've got to hop into beta mode. So control alt C on your keyboard to open up this text commands, cam.beta mode on, multi-axis flow. We'll choose our geometry and underpasses are going to enable multi-axis and then go back and say fourth axis limit. We get a warning. Again, that's because this is in beta. We have to change our tool orientation, set the z-axis to the direction of our a-axis, and we have a true fourth axis toolpath. To prove that out, Tormach post processor X reversed, We've got the flow that we just created, selected, post it out, open up that code. Here we go. So again, that's in beta. I commend Autodesk for giving us access to things in beta because it's really cool to help test them and see them. But they do have bugs. They do have quirks. Use them at your own risk. Otherwise, folks, I hope that helped. We've got some more projects coming on the MX, including on the fourth axis. Jeffrey's actually working on a motorcycle triple tree project for his dirt bike. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.